Good evening, good evening, welcome, good evening. Welcome, my name is Obin Dako. I want to share with you um, being a father and, you know, being an entrepreneur at the same time. Being a father and being an entrepreneur at the same time. Um, all around the world, they make a lot of... Um, you know, they make a lot of big deal out of uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, and things like that. The entrepreneur's life is really opposite to the normal life that most people know. The normal life that most people know. Um, the data available to you will, will help you to go through this journey as a, as a person who's, who's, who's engaging uh, business, you know, trying to do something on your own and possibly build a team, build a structure, solve some kind of problems in society. There's a lot of data that you have to have and um, I don't think that they are readily that much available. Um, the way you live your lifestyle is almost opposite what every the other you know the other group, you know the people with job. Um, they go they get up in the morning by eight o'clock nine o'clock they have to be at their workplace. By five o'clock six o'clock they are closing they are coming home. You know they come to live with their family. They are sure of the employment. When they say that uh, the work here is easily understood, the entrepreneur's lifestyle, the business person's lifestyle, is not uh, readily understood like that. Especially if you if you have to start uh, from the start, and being a father is also a tough job, very difficult job. And so how, how do you do these things, do these two things? Uh, well, you know, most of them, almost all of them are, you know, they say it's difficult and it's difficult. And so uh, I want to share with you my thoughts on uh, how you go through this um, lifestyle as an entrepreneur and how you also handle yourself as a father, you know, especially if you have children you know maybe a child or children with you and uh, if you happen to have the mother you know married to you how do you go through this and how do you bundle the two together so uh, they said to succeed in a business takes a lot of work which I agree it takes a lot of work and to be a father to your children also takes a lot of work each of them needs a lot of commitment, a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of resources. Almost all children, you know, if you happen to have a father, uh, you look up to your father. Most people take jobs after their parents. They're the first inspiration, especially the father. When I was growing up, my father lived someplace and I was living with my mother somewhere. They were married, all right. But I couldn't wait in the morning to just see my father, you know, and go to the place, look for him. If you go and he's not there, you wait for him or you go to all the places that he's, he is and you try to find him. So there is that affection that your children have towards you. And you have no idea the kind of person they see you as you are. They see you as the world they see you as everything you may not even believe <laughs> yourself like that but they see you almost all their life they will see you like that and so to be a father is not it's not uh, something to take lightly but be an entrepreneur if your children go to school and they ask them you know the other people whose parents are you know very organized profession they ask them what does your father do they are able to tell 
you know, my father is this, my father is that, my father is this. But if you are a business person, uh, <laughs> when they ask your children, what does your father do? Uh, they struggle to give a definite answer because that, that thing is not popular. That thing is not popular. Hey, Oscar, thank you. So how do you handle the duties? Because there are duties of a father. How do you explain it to your children? that you, 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 what you do as an entrepreneur, what you do as a business person, how do you explain it to them? And how do they become confident? How do they become confident that my father is a business person? Especially at the beginning that the business is not successful. If you're probably intelligent, you would have started the business and been successful in it before you probably would take a wife and give birth to children. If you happen to be doing the same the thing at the same time, you are marrying, you are giving, you know, to children, and then you are building a business, and the business is not even successful. It will be difficult for your children if they go to school to be able to explain it to the to the colleagues to the school that my father is a is a business person or is an entrepreneur because they will, at <laughs> at that point there will be nothing to show <laughs> that uh, this is what my father does. But at the same time. You, sh you should still be a father and so one of the things that probably will help you will be getting your 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 duties defined rightly as an entrepreneur uh, to your children and probably to yourself that what are the responsibilities you know required of a father um, it, whether you know it whether you believe it or, you, or whether you you do understand it or whether you understand it uh, you are you are the foundation that your children get to build on you are the force. You are the confidence that they have. You are the world that they understand. And your children love you to death. You mean a lot to them. That's a father. That's why when you come home and you have to go out and do something, you know they, they're asking you, why are you going? <laughs> Everybody goes to work and they come home and they have to stay at home. And yet you have no timetable. And so you should be able to explain that yes, you would you would want to be with them, but the kind of job that you have, anything at all can happen at any time. And um, it's something that you have to do to take care of the family as well. You should be able to teach them love, compassion, kindness. You should be able to teach your children faith. You should be able to teach them how to think, how to organize themselves. As a father, you cannot leave everything that your children are going to become to the school. And as an entrepreneur, you may not have so much time to be present all the time. So you should have an organized structure, an organized plan, maybe once a, a week. Maybe 10 minutes a, a week or one hour a week where you, you, you teach your children. You cannot leave what they are becoming only to the school and thinking that they will leave you. They will live the life that you, at least you would expect them to live because they are your children. There should be a conscious effort from your part to also inject knowledge to them. Children interpret love as the time that you spend with them. You know, so to a child, if you if you happen to have money and you're buying all the things, the toys and everything for them, they like them. But their love to them is how much time that you spend with them. Now, these children need your time and then your business also needs your time. I don't think that you should try to separate the lifestyle as an entrepreneur and you as a, as a father think that they should be uh, you know you put them together sometimes if my children are late in school and I'm doing something you know maybe around four I have to pick them I will go and pick them and, and send them to where we are going or to the office I don't try to say that I'm, I'm closing the, the office and go to you know go to the house because my children have closed sometimes Saturdays we have to move through town and we go through town together because that's the lifestyle of the entrepreneur. If I were working in uh, in an office somewhere, 
where I had st structured plan. I could easily say that, yes, I, I, you know, and you cannot leave the, the, the upbringing of your children to just the maid in the house. You know, to the maid in the house, no. And one of the things that you may want to teach your children, and you may also want to teach yourself, is that they, 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 are, they are your children, all right, but you don't own them. They're not yours. They're just a steward. So you would want to, right from the beginning, you would want to t handle them with respect, seek their opinion, and treat, treat them fully as human beings. The shouters and the beatings that, you know, we grew up with, these children will live in a different time. That the confidence that you have to build for them, the kind of people that they have to become to build this, this kind of continent that we have now, the confidence that they have to assume, you would have to give them that maximum respect and treat them like full human beings and ask them questions, opinion on the things that you even do, especially if they can talk. Like I have uh, six, I have uh, another one is uh, I think seven and no, 9 and 12. They speak. They understand. They go to school. Everything that you're doing it affects them. Everything that we are doing affects them. They happen to come from a family where the father is into business, the mother is into business. So it's not like they go and they, ca they come home and the mother is at home. Both of us are working. And so we cannot really separate the work from them. We just have to find the way of working with them. To let them understand. So you teach the children. If you didn't have a father, and if you didn't have somebody who you look up to, becoming a father becomes a bit difficult because you don't have um, you don't have an example readily to you. But that's why you have to study. And most people probably were brought up by their by their mothers, but you have to be a father, and a father is different from the mother. Father builds the confidence of the children. The father protects and provides for his children. He provides stability and acceptance to your children. You help them to have faith in God, understand even themselves. You help them to understand their own lives. What do they want to become? It's your duty as a father. Now you are also building a business. How do you do all these things together? You should be able to teach them the essence of education, the importance of school, what school can do and what school cannot do. Everything that you do, they copy. Everything. It's not just only the things that you're saying with your mouth. Everything. They look at you, you may think that they're not looking at you. How you dress, how you talk, how you talk to the mother, how you clean the house, everything else that you are doing, they're copying. So if you don't want them to become it, and you may not want to do them. You are the one to help them to become honest. And so you are working and they see you lying. You cannot say that they should not lie. It will not be true. They will, they, they, as a matter of fact, the children will pick the ones that you're doing more than the ones that you are saying. So you would, you would also want to help them to have faith in humanity. You would want to help them to be humble how to express joy and patience. You would want to teach them how to have purity and self-control, kindness and courage. You may want to help them to have forgiveness. It's a father's duty. How do you help them to express courage? You teach them and you also practice it to them as well. You want to help them to learn how to work hard by you working hard. Of course, if you have a business, you know, you are, you are working more than the one with the job and that's what some of the things that people who who don't do business don't know they think that if you have your own company it means that you work less it's opposite if you have to work 10 minutes in somebody else's company in your own company you work maybe 20 maybe 200 minutes so you teach them how to solve problems you have to teach them how to clean their clothes how to clean their rooms, you teach them how to speak, you teach them passion. You help them to build as full human beings. And you have to do that at the same time building your business and probably even expanding it 
and it's difficult. That's why I'm saying that it's difficult for you to say that this is my family. I go to work, I come home, I separate them. I think that a lot of the things that you can do, you have to find a way of doing it with them and making it uh, as fun as possible. You have to handle being a father and being a business person. And uh, uh, both of them, there is no formula. You know, the business, there's no formula. You don't know where he's going strictly, especially at the beginning. And being a father, a young father, is also tough, especially if you did also have a father that you look up to, a father who taught you, a father who, who groomed you to be a man. If you didn't have that, you're also finding it difficult to even know what to do yourself and also what to do with your children. It becomes difficult. <laughs> Sometimes you may have to maybe get somebody to help you to do some other errands so that you can focus more on uh, the things that are important to you and the family is also important to you. It is required of you to probably teach them how to, you know, go to church, how to pray, and to how to become good people. These things you have to do them intentionally have to do them intentionally you cannot say that uh, you know once a while no your the way you treat the girls probably will be different from the way you, you treat the boys your daughters take everything the kind of men that they will be marry will be just like you or rightly opposite to you based on how well you do as a father so you cannot lose this opportunity being a father to your children. The boy is confidence. Everything else that he stands for is they are looking at you as a father. How you behave, how you teach them, how you talk to them. Every one of them is unique in their own capacity. Some will be loud, some will be quiet. You cannot treat all of them as the same. Everyone is different. Some may be good with mathematics, and another one may be good with football. You are the father. You have to know how to treat each of them differently. It is your duty to help them to discover their own talent, their own aspirations, and even their own personalities. Being a father is not especially being a successful father, a good father to your children, requires commitment and faith that you can do it. It's not impossible, even if you, if you, even if you grew up as an orphan, even if you didn't know anybody, if you didn't have any man in your life as a father. It's not impossible. It's just the willingness to study and learn and read about it and practice it. And don't hold yourself so much if you made a lot of mistakes. If you made mistakes and, and you didn't know, you know, some because business is that difficult and because business is that tough, it creates a lot of pressure. And sometimes if you don't take care, you will bring the pressure that the business is creating on the children. You may damage them. When they are even not wrong, you may want to punish them because there is some problem somewhere. So you should be able to separate the emotions and the difficulties that you meet in a business. And you should be able to um, shield the children, their impressions and their, their growth level, you know, from the pressure that is coming from your business. The good thing is about the good thing about this is that because you're doing business and and if you happen to be doing well as a business person, uh, in terms of struggles of you know in terms of paying school fees and in terms of basic things of life, I think your children will get to benefit more. If you if you seem to get to a stage where the business starts to make a lot of money, uh, paying school fees will not be problem. It's not one of those things that you're going to think about almost all the time. Than the other person who is really. Uh, living on a very limited uh, budget. It's one of the things that uh, benefits of you being a business person. It compensates for the pressure, it compensates for the difficulties, it compensates for all the things that everybody does not understand. Your children are taking sometimes their word view from the very things that you're doing. You know, if you happen to have a father who was a cocoa farmer, 
there's a lot of examples there's a lot of impressions there's your world will be just because your father was a cocoa farmer there's a lot that you will learn just because your father was a cocoa farmer if your father was a politician there's a lot that you will learn around that and if your father happens to be a business person with your children you know ah they they are living with a father who is doing business it means that is their world so if there's somebody is talking about law they may not know much about it but if whatever business that you're doing they will seem to know something about it and it's going to affect the way they end up they end up um, uh, becoming whoever they want to become and both of them uh, yes they are twin tower responsibilities and um, none of them is that easily mastered running your business requires a lot of attention a lot of time a lot of resources uh, to build that business and then being a father it, it's also you know because it's not like you can put one on hold and maybe you can say that okay i put my children age on hold so you, you, you turn the clock and then they stay like that till you are successful with your business you know or you say that okay i put the, the business on hold and then uh, i look at the children till they grow uh, if you were not born rich and if you didn't have a lot of money uh, you would want to build the business for it to become successful so that you can provide um, you know, school fees, food, shelter, clothes uh, for your children. So you have to handle the same. You, ha you have to handle the two possibly at the same time. And it takes a lot of uh, skill, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, stamina, a lot of responsibilities to do them and do them well. That's why sometimes you see that uh, business, especially successful business people, by the time that they have become hugely successful, uh, they lose their children. And some of them even lose their marriages and and things like that you know because it takes a lot of effort just as you are paying attention you know on the business you are you are looking at the finance you are looking at the product you are looking at the project you are you're you are, you are recruiting more people you are building your team you're looking at the structures you know it demands a lot of effort you are going for seminars you're reading books just as you do that for the business for the business to become successful you might as well do the same with, with your limited time that you have for the same family. So you would want to look at, you know, study, looking at your children, what is important to them. When you come home, whether you had that growing up or you didn't have that growing up. Because if you had a father who, who gave you some kind of a pattern, it is easier for you. You know, your father will just, uh, maybe you, he'll put you to bed, he will read some books to you. He will take you to church, he will talk to you, you will be concerned, the kind of course that you're reading, those things. If you had that, it will not be difficult for you to play that. Now, if you didn't have that and you live on a free range, you know, there was nobody. So you live as a, you live on your own. Or if there was something, somebody, uh, maybe there was a father, but it's not like he was so much involved. Uh, you find it a bit tough trying to, you know, develop some kind of schedule and plan and, and strategy to develop the children but you cannot expect that they will just grow to become very good children just because um, you gave birth to them and deliver you they will deliver you in the house no in the first few years the first 10 years of their lives uh, they probably will listen and that's the time that you have to just as you're paying attention to the business that's the time that you also have to pay attention to them and and it's not just correcting and reacting but also uh teaching them and being involved and sometimes if you are going to the site or you're going to the shop whatever that business that you do you go with them and maybe you put them in the car if you have one if you don't have car and you have trotro sometimes you just go with them to let them see what you're doing you know and as you're going you're talking you buy them yogurt you buy them farmer you buy them orange watch it and you're talking that's a way because you may not have a lot of time to every time be bonding with them so and and the time that they spend with you is probably it's part of the bonding so uh, even if you are not talking they see you moving and they see the love that you're you know you're, you're pouring on them and that's what builds them so the more separate that they are from you the more you're not building them so whatever if you have even a limited time whatever things that you're doing you find a way of getting them 
involved and getting them uh, to work with you. Sometimes you may be cleaning the house. Sometimes you may be washing. Sometimes maybe anything that you're doing, you just get them. Because children, if you call them to come, let's do this. So far as you are there, they will do it because they look up to you as a father. You know, so you, 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 you look at that and you do that. And that's why probably you'll be able to build. Uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect. Uh, you don't have to be a perfect father. You just have to be the one who is willing to be present in the lives of your children. So by the time that your business has become, you know, some bit successful, your children, you will not lose them, especially when they get into the 15s and the 14s and the 13s, you know, when they start to develop themselves, when they start to develop their own identity. If they don't have any memory of you being that and you were just only looking at you building your business, they will leave to hate even the business. They will leave not to be part of it at all. They don't want it because they, you were never uh, present in every in anything that they were doing. You know, yeah. the PTA, uh, you like it or you don't like it. You know, you, sometimes you just have to find a way to go. Sometimes they go, they talk like you know everybody has time, but we still have to go uh, as much as we can. Let them see that uh, uh, you think about them and you are you are there for them. They are your children. They don't have any other father but you. And um, the time, it goes that quickly. The, the other time your child was five, now your child is 10. They are growing that quickly. So any any opportunity that you le you lose to embrace them, you lose it forever. And and the thing about it is that it forms a memory in them. You as a grown-up, you if they ask you of your father, you tell us, you know, my father was this, my father was that, my father did this, my father didn't do this, you know, those kind of things. So you are also forming the same thing in the, in the minds of your children. So you would want to leave that which, which is good uh, for them. So my name is Obeda Okon. I am talking about uh, being an entrepreneur and being a father at the same time. And both of them are two tough, tough jobs. They're difficult, you know, that simple uh, to start to build a business and also to become uh, a father at the same time. All of them need your attention. All of them are difficult, but all of them can also be enjoyable. You know, it's life. Uh, if anybody I would ask your children, what does your father do? At the beginning, they may not know. They may even think that you don't do any work. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have any job. Because their friends' parents may be, you know, the things that everybody knows. My friend's parents is a lawyer, he's a doctor, works in a bank, you know, he's a politician. And you, your children may not have any definition for you at all. They say that, what does your father do? They may not know. <laughs> they may not know. But uh, you have to teach them that this is also a part of livelihood, a part that you're also uh, contributing to the building of our country building of our society and you provide jobs for people that are solving problems for uh, for society and you would want to teach them how to do and how you do what you do involve them in every activities or some of the activities that you think children will love to do you know and so um, it takes a lot of time I said uh, to build a business and it also takes a lot of effort uh, to, to to be a father and to train your children especially if you want to succeed as a father. Uh, you may have the woman as the mother of the children, or you may not have the woman as, as the mother. Maybe the, mother, the marriage didn't work, but it's still uh, your children. They are still your children, and, you, and they have nobody to call father but you. And father means a lot to children, just as your father means a lot to you. Even in, even in your current age, you still recall your father, whether he was present or he was not present, whether he helped you or he didn't help you, you still have a memory of somebody you call father, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a divine, you know, it's divine, it's divinity, the relationship between a child and the father, the relationship between a daughter and the father, a son and the father, they shape almost what the children will become. If you had good impression on your daughters and you loved them enough and you were so much involved in their lives, they become very much stable. They become strong. They become very much uh, good-mannered people. 
But if there was no father for the children, especially the daughters, by the time that they are 12, they are 13, they are 14, they are looking for boyfriend. You know, because they are looking for somebody to play that position or to play that role in their lives. You know, and the son will also be looking for a mentor. If you're not present, he's be looking for somebody. That's why boys who smoke weed and become all this, you know, it's not because they are bad boys. It's because they are looking for somebody to lead them. They are looking for a father. And so you would want to provide that fatherhood. It's 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 a requirement. Once you give birth to them, you just have to know that you are the one that they look up to. You know, your words mean so much to them. What you say to your children mean a lot. Means a lot to them. You don't want to use harsh words. You don't want to be the one shouting, even if it's tough. You know, sometimes when the business is difficult, uh, any little thing that they do, you would want to shout. But you should be able to separate the difficulty uh, from the shouting. You'd want to use good, good words on the on the on the children. You know, they are fragile. They look up to you. Even if you know, even up to date, down that you are 35, 40, the words that your father use uh, mean a lot to you. If your father tells you that he believes in you, he's confident in you, he trusts you, they mean a lot to you. Even if you have grown. The same, how much more your children? Everything that you say mean a lot to them. They look up to your praise. They look up to your encouragement. They look up to the words that you say every day to them. When they get up, when they get up in the morning, they're looking for you. You mean so much to them. And so um, you just have to learn how to be a strong father, a good father, a present father, even though you're building a business and uh, all kind of things could be going on in the business. You have to just know that these ones, if you lose that moment, it's life. You, you, you lost it forever. And so be present. You don't have to have a lot of money to be a good father, even though it's good. You just have to have a good heart and, and the willingness to provide for your children and to be there and to be involved and to let them understand that you have them at heart and you love them and they mean a lot to you. In as much as they mean all these things to you, you're still not the one who created them. So they would they would want to develop with their own mind, with their own understanding, with their own personality, because they are also going to be somebody's mother and somebody's father, and you, they cannot be you, you know. So, and you should also be ready for the kind of mistakes that children make, because they are children, you know. They are children. They don't have to be you. They don't have to be perfect just have to be children and they, are, they have to have fun they have to grow they have to play they have to laugh they have to make the, the car dirty they have to make the house dirty you help them to clean you know because you're the father the fact is that you want to create a, mem a memory of love and that builds them that builds that that encourages them if you have a child who is so much academically sound it's break he's very intelligent but who did they have a father at home encouraging him that child may be that much intelligent but emotionally that child may not be that strong you have an average son in the class whose father was that much involved and encouraging that child will end up being able to take risk and being able to dare and be courageous in life and more stable than the one whose father was not present and the one who did not have anybody that you could look up to unless when he grows there's something that happens that he starts to gather a lot of information uh, to replace what he didn't have and so that you cannot underplay the presence of a father and what the father does to children what the father feels the things that you build in your child is different from what the mother does to the children you are, you, you are the strength that they know but the man that they know as a matter of our children believe that their father is a very strong, very rich, very intelligent, they can assume that you can be wrong. <laughs> they can assume, especially when they are young. I mean, you if you had a father that you, you, you saw, you couldn't understand that your father could be wrong. Everything you want to ask your father. That's what it does. And so, uh, but you have to also treat them with full respect. The kind of training that they have given us uh, cannot be the kind of training that we are going to give to these children with the future that they are going to live in. You can't.
cannot be shouting and, and slapping them. No. No. If you do them, there's no need to do those. You have to welcome them. You have to you have to love them. You have to let them be part of you. And you have you have to also know that if you build so strong a business, you build so many businesses and you lose your children, you will regret. You will regret. So they require the same kind of investment as your business probably will require. And this is more even eternal than the business. And so <laughs> your children will look up to you look up to you and 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 even the mother when the mother sees the way you're treating the children it builds their marriage as well and so you build their values you build their confidence you provide for them you make them feel like they're humans you accept them their strength and their weakness you teach them how, how to have faith in life how to have faith in God. You teach them how to have plan for their own lives, vision. You teach them. You see, when your father is not involved, especially children who are very much intelligent, if they don't have anybody teaching them, the only thing that they think they have to do in this life to succeed will be to put so much confidence in school. You know, because nobody taught them. And there are other things that you have to know to succeed. But if you're a father, you know, you will be able to tell them the importance of school and to what limit the importance of school ends, you know. And that they would have to develop other things to be successful in life and to enjoy life. And to become uh, responsible people and successful people, people who are value-driven, who are kind, who are courageous, who have, you know, forgiving heart, because those are also as important as just the academic uh, knowledge. You would want to teach them how to work, how to work. You are the father. They look up to you. You're everything. You are their world, actually. So you have to pay attention. If they are sick, you have to be there. If they are pain, you have to be there. You're doing something in school, even though your business is, you know, especially when there are a lot of troubles in school, in, in, in the business, the usual man, the usual entrepreneur will not want to be there. You know, you don't want to go at all because it's a waste of time. You already have problems that you're solving in the business. And then this child is doing some opening day something, or, you know. And in Ghana, they have so many things uh, around school that uh, they, they organize the school as if we don't have any other thing to do. Uh, until we change it, we just have to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, go alongside with it. And so, at the end of the month, at the end of the uh, the term, they would want to come, you know, let this, the, the parents come to look at the, the score, and uh, they tell you what marks that they scored and everything. Me, when I go to see them, even though I, you know, if they pass, I'm impressed, but. Uh, that's not where my attention is. My attention is, can they do the math? Can they read? Can they understand what they're reading? I'm not so much particular about the position, whether they were first or they were, they were last. Not so much than the marks that they had against what they wrote. You know, and um, in, in as much as all those things are important, I still see them as just about 5% of what my children need uh, to become successful in this life. So the confidence that I built in them, the things that I teach them, uh, if I continue to do that, then they will be, they will be the future of the child's life or the children's life than just the academics that they are getting. Some of us were very much academic, you know, we were very much intelligent in school, but the input from your father was responsible for your ability to keep going when things get difficult or to give up. The courage that you express is coming from that background. If you had somebody who built that confidence in you, you will keep trying with your vision, with your dream. And that is what you want to leave in your children. You want to leave courage. You want to leave uh, boldness. You want to leave clarity of thought. You want to leave ethics. You want to leave with them the ability to work well 
and and solve problems and and face challenges you know not to run away from challenges those are the things that you would have to put in, in them the school would just teach them how to do mathematics how to read english how to how to understand chemistry but school cannot put in them courage vision strength skill development the school may not be able to do that at all it's you as a father so if you run away from their lives you're breaking precious lives you are everything to your children you want to succeed as, as an entrepreneur and succeed but once you 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 had yourself in trouble to 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 bring another man another woman into this life uh, don't forget that a lot of what you're doing to them now will affect what they become the kind of personalities that they will develop the kind of people that they become a lot of it will because of the kind of father that you have been with them. And so don't let the normal part in that they say that all oh, successful business people, uh, they pay so much attention that they lose their children. It shouldn't happen to you. Uh, pay attention, pay attention. And hopefully you'll be able to do a good job, you know, uh, have the business and still have the family together. And not just together, but uh, bonded and uh, successful and a peaceful and prosperous uh, family. So um, you are the father they look up to. They look up to. So you do that with intention. You do that knowing that these are people that you're developing. You have to know as a father what are the things that they, they look up for you. You know, they look, they want you to be there. They want to hear your voice. They want to see you. They want you to come. My son, uh, I want Indomi. I want the one you prepare. You know me, I don't know how to prepare, so I just put everything in it, and that's the one that they, they, they like. You know, so they you, you put everything in it, you put it on the fire, and the taste is what they like. It's not so much the taste, it's the fact that the father is doing it for him. So it's joy. It builds, it builds something in him. When you come home, you see the girls will be showing you people. Uh, hard this, a hard this. They just want to hear your voice. No matter the, the difficulties that you had in the day, you still have to listen to them. No matter the challenges that your businesses are going through or the successes that you're enjoying, your children still will look up to you as a father. And possibly, <laughs> they will become part of it. Because the thing about it is our generation, whether you like it or not, the profession that you have chosen as an entrepreneur, is likely that your children, that will be the profession that they will have. If you hear that there's unemployment and they say that there's a lot of unemployment, the best skill that you can give to your children will also the ability to create their own businesses. So you're helping them. You're actually giving them a head start by you being one yourself. By you being one yourself. So if you are an entrepreneur, it's a good start for them. They will have a good example. So don't take it lightly at all. And make sure that you polish and organize the business so that your children will be proud of it. In the beginning, if there are a lot of difficulties, there are a lot of problems, you should fight and be the strong man that you are to make sure that the business becomes something that your children can be proud of. You know, so that when they are talking to their children, when they are talking to their friends, they will say that my father's business is this, my mother's business is that. You know, you should be able, there should be the source of encouragement for you to even build a good business because, you know, you have to take care of them. It's nobody's business but yours. So be the strong father, provide the leadership. In the, in the in the at home provide it they look up to you build their confidence build their their character their values system be there for them be involved in school and um, in church train them teach them yourself you have to teach them yourself even if it's once a month teach them something it's not just the chemistry sometimes when they are going to write the exam you know you just have to be there and say that, okay let's go through the papers and see even if it's two minutes, it will mean so much to them. You know, whatever that you do with them, it, it's part of the bonding. And that's how you get to them. When they grow, it will stay with them. They'll remember. I remember one of the one of the things that my father helped me to read. I, uh, it was a book I was trying to read. And I still recall, you know, even though it's vague. And um, I still recall when I was that young and uh, I was writing from one to thousand. And... Uh, I wrote it and I showed uh, my father. He was very happy. 
you know i remember there was a time that um, there were some difficulties that we were having in secondary school and my father came and said that what you did was very good i'm impressed of that is it's good and that word stayed with me i still remember that so the words that you're teaching them they mean a lot to them they will re don't say the words that will destroy them and break them use the words that will build their children to make them strong and to make them believe that they also have capacity look at them well what is it that they are good at identify it look at them some of them will be very good with something don't kill it because you want them to become something else look at what the natural flow that they have and help them to develop them because they are also human beings that are going to develop and possibly help africa to solve our challenges and you have to put that consciousness consciousness in them that the responsibility is on all of us to develop our continent you know so you cannot just develop your children and uh, by the time that they are 15 years they want to travel to america they don't want to do they don't want to have anything to do with africa at all you probably did not do a good work because where we need help is really in africa so in as much as you're training them you're building them make sure that you also train them to be a good citizen of our country good christians if you're a christian uh good people you teach them that and you talk to them on those because we need people like that to train their children so that our our future uh, will change as a continent and if the future will change as a continent it means or it will mean that uh, the kind of training that we are giving to these children will be different from the ones that they gave us so you would want to you want to help them to think clearly give them tools to solve problem how to manage things rightly you have to help them to read a lot of books Teach them how to read books, and not only classrooms, books, but books for knowledge to live. You teach your children, and they should see you read. They should see you read your Bible. They should see you read your books. They even should see you praying to God. It helps them to build. You know, they build themselves. They build their faith, because whether you like it or not, in this life you need faith in a force which is higher than you. You know, so you should not train your children and when they, at the time that they are 20 years, they say that I don't believe in God at all. That would not be a good work. You know, I don't want to have anything to do with God or, or Jesus. That's not a good work. So you would want to teach them. And they should see you practice them yourself. It's not just that you're building business, business, business. But you should teach them that to succeed on this earth, they need to develop their mind. They need to develop themselves. They need to get the right kind of information. They need to work hard, they need to think rightly, and they need to read and understand how to become successful. You know, you have to teach them rightly, or somebody else will teach them that to succeed, they have to come for prayers. Somebody else will teach them that for, uh, to succeed, they have to go and kill their enemies in church. So it's your duty to teach your children rightly, the right tools, so that they will live a less uh, stressful life. You have no idea how many lives have been destroyed because the parents did not teach us the right form of even religion, the right form or the right approach to God. You know, so if you if you believe in that, if you work, you believe in diligence, you believe in you believe in being reward, rewarded by the work that you do, you should let your children. Don't assume that just because you know it, it means that your children probably know it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you know it. What matters is that you also teach them and tell them your convictions, your philosophies of life. Possibly you may even write a book for your children. You know, just for them. Just just pamphlet. You write some things, your, your ideologies, the things that you believe in. You put them in a maybe three-page booklet and give it to them. They can always... Uh, uh, remember, or probably you can do uh, a video and teach them the things that you stand for. That these are the things that you want them to know all through their lives. It will help them. You know. So, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a family and you are a father, you just have to know how to be a father. You have to be strong as a man. You cannot. You are the you are the strength that they look up to. You know. At a point, you are the man that they look up to. They know that nothing can overcome you, and so you cannot crumble to be the strength the strong man that you are you have to be the one that is providing you have to be the one that is protecting you have to be involved in your life so you can't just say that i don't care you know the mother is there everything the mother is there you have to show up as a man and and let them understand the the, the, 
a man's approach to life you know and it's, sometimes it's difficult if you didn't have somebody who was a man involved in your life directly it's difficult but that could not be an excuse you just have to <laughs> have to find a way to learn it and to be that strong even if it's difficult you just have to be that strong and to show because that son is going to have a reference point and that probably will just be you you know so um, whether you had it taught you if they taught you or they didn't teach you uh, you are forming a new generation which is coming out of your children and you would want to be a good example to them and so the business you have to pay attention to it uh, the finances the, the everything that you're doing you're expanding it but don't lose the family focus on the family be involved in your in your daughter's life be involved in your son's life uh, teach them have fun with them play with them and let them understand that uh, you love them and you you are there for them and you appreciate them and um, whether they are first in class or last in class you want to encourage them to live to become successful with their lives and when they make mistakes that's not the time to to crush them and to punish them when they make mistakes that's the time to show them love and kindness so that they can open up to you and tell you everything you know and as they grow up if you form that base as they grow up they will still see you as somebody that they can confide in somebody that they can talk to somebody who is there as their friend somebody who respects them because you have to respect them even though you're they are your children they are also human beings in their own right so you have to give them absolute respect absolute respect and and trust them and trust their intelligence it means so much to your children that you believe in their decisions and the ability to choose rightly and possibly you help them to choose as well you know don't bring this way of saying me my mom they didn't teach me so I, I also not teach you no help them let them see that you believe in their choices nothing builds the confidence of your children more than the fact that they know that you love them and that you believe that they are also intelligent and you believe that they can also choose something that you accept it means a lot to your son it will mean a lot to your daughter when they grow and even in their peer ages in the teens where a lot of stress a lot of difficulties a girl will not be following any boy because you would have provided that kind of uh, affection that kind of love for them so they will know the standard your son will not be following anybody because you would have been that father so difficult but you have to blend the two and get involved don't separate them it's part of living and enjoy as you do them and don't be frustrated it's not frustration it's just life <laughs> it's just life so enjoy being an entrepreneur and being a father at the same time enjoy them and um, be the best as what you can do so thank you very much uh, for watching thank you being a father and the entrepreneur at the same time. <laughs> Thank you.